You mentioned self-sovereign identity. Can you kind of explain what you mean behind that for the listeners? Yeah. So, I mean, uh, right now your identity is tied to some hodgepodge of like your social security number, you know, information about your previous addresses. I mean, think of any time you've opened an account somewhere, right? It's, it's, it's just personal information that a hacker could easily get if they really wanted to. And so identity theft is very rampant right now, but, but that's essentially what your identity is on paper in the current governance system. So a self-sovereign identity system is one in which there's no, it's, it's an identity system that ties a, a, an online account to a real person without any government involved in that process. You know, it's all smart contracts, all decentralized software that's running it. And there's a couple ways that you can go about doing this, but ultimately you, you need what's called an anti-civil mechanism. And this is a way to separate out duplicate accounts and you ensure that each person only has one account. So there, there's different approaches to this. One way is to do social graph analysis. So there's a project called Bright ID that does this, where they, they look at your social connections. You have a social graph and you can kind of go to these meetings and you can have people verify you're a real person. And that generates this big complicated graph that you run an algorithm on. And it can sort of tell the difference between someone that is just creating a bunch of fake accounts and all verifying each other versus someone that's like highly connected socially. And so this is using things like your, like a facial scan or your fingerprints or some combination of these things to create a cryptographic identity of your body. And then you have to ver you have to authenticate through that anytime you want to use this account. And that ensures that you can't take your biometrics and create a, a separate account. So there's a, there's a project called human node that's doing this and they essentially build neural networks on your data. So like they'll, they'll take a, your, the shape of your face from various pictures and, and they'll train a neural network to identify that. And then when you want to authenticate, you just run that neural network. And if it says it looks like the person we, we were trained on, then, then that's how you, you know, sign a transaction. That's how you sign in essentially. So the biometrics is really promising because it's a bit more scalable and, and automated from in terms of onboarding users. The social graph one is promising because that, that potentially can leverage existing social graphs, like your, your social network connections and your connections in real life and your, your work history and things like that to make it very difficult to have an, uh, an alternate persona somewhere. You'd, you'd almost have to be a person that lived in real life to two separate identities. So self-sovereign identity, it's really going to open up the door to some incredible things in crypto. When can we expect it? Uh, Human node is in their test net right now. You know, I, I, I think they'll probably launch a main net towards the end of this year. And even then it's going to be really bare bones. So probably another year or two before it's really ready for mass adoption. Bright ID is in a similar state. So I would say we're looking at three to five years before these systems are really production ready and can actually onboard millions of users and start authenticating human identities. So in the meantime, we got to kind of grapple with, you know, the, these, these poor DAO governance systems. But I think with this on the horizon, it, it's really bullish for taking crypto to the next level. Do you think these identity systems are in a constant race with the hackers or thieves and how, like, I always feel like it's always back and forth, right? They come up with a solution, then they figure it out and kind of, do you think there's actually an ultimate solution or is it just always a game of who's ahead? Yeah, I think, I think it's always, it's always going to be a game. You know, that's, that's really how it is with any sort of security mechanism, but you, you minimize that chance to, to some diminishing probability, right? In, in like the case of these biometrics or these social graph analysis systems, you never 100% prove that this Ethereum address is tied to Justin Green and he only has one account. There's no 100% proof there, but you can get it to like 99% sure and you can make it cost hundreds of millions of dollars to produce any sort of fraud. And, and so by increasing the cost and, and decreasing their probability, it gets good enough. And it only has to be significantly better than our current identity system, right? Which is not asking a lot. I mean, what are the chances that someone steals your identity right now? It's pretty high. And uh, if it hasn't happened to you, it's only a matter of time, or maybe it has happened and you just don't know about it. So it's not a, a high bar to improve upon. And furthermore, since it will be fully digital and, and global, everyone in the world will have access to it and it will instantly be you know, more accessible to anyone in the world.